Hello, everyone. Today we are looking at grammar for expressing regrets in English. And then afterwards, we're going to practice speaking using what we've learned in a role play between you and me. First of all, let's look at some of the language we use in English to express regret. So have a look at this short story. I'm sad. Why? Because I don't possess money. I don't drive a car. I don't know what to do today. I didn't go to work yesterday. I didn't hear my alarm clock. I didn't get up in time. So this person is very sad about some bad things that have happened to them. And they could express this another way in terms of regret. So in the story, they're speaking about it like it's a fact. This happened, this happened, this happened. But you could also put your feelings into it and introduce phrases such as I wish or if only. So I could say, instead of because I don't possess money, I could say, I wish I, and now we also need to change something else too. When we talk about regrets that are present uh, with I wish and if only, we actually use the past simple. So I need to change this to I wish I possessed money. Very important change to make so it can be correct. I'm sad. Why? Because I wish I possessed money. I wish makes it a uh, regret in the past and to express the fact that we're in the present simple um, we're changing that to the past simple so possessed becomes possessed. Let's go on to the next one so another way that we can express regret is with if only so instead of saying I don't drive a car to turn that from a fact to a regret, I could say, if only I drove a car. So again, it's a present situation, but we're using the past simple to turn it into a regret. If only I drove a car. And then the next one, well, let's do the same again. And if only... I and no becomes new. If only I knew what to do today. So in all of these examples, we have a current present regret. When when doesn't this person have money? It's now they don't have it. They don't drive a car now. They don't know what to do today. So today is now. All of these are present current regrets. Um, and when we use I wish and if only, we change the present simple or the present tense into the past simple or the past tense. Let's now look at the um, following examples, which have a slight difference. Now, notice here, we're already in the past. I didn't go to work yesterday. So here we're talking about a situation already in the past. How do we make that a past regret with I wish or if only? Well, the answer is to turn it into the past perfect. The past perfect is when we use had followed by the past participle. Normally it's to show one event happens before another, but when we're expressing regrets like this, it's kind of moving the tense back one stage. So the present moved back to the past simple. The past simple now moves back to the past perfect. So let's try and change these sentences into regrets too, using the same phrases. So I didn't go to work yesterday. So it's already in the past. We need to change this to the past perfect. So instead of I didn't, I wish 
I had gone to work yesterday. I wish I had gone to work yesterday. And it's worth mentioning something else you may have noticed. When we express regret with I wish and if only, we take away the negative sense because we're thinking about what we wanted to happen, not what didn't happen. So because we're changing from describing what didn't happen, negative, to what we wanted to happen, positive, or rather just normal sentence structure, we take away the negative word. So instead of saying, I didn't wish I had gone, the negative disappears. I wish I had gone. This is what I wanted the situation to be, not what it actually was. So the negative disappears. I wish I had gone to work yesterday. And the same with if only. I didn't hear my alarm clock if only I had heard my alarm clock. So negative turns to positive. And we use the past perfect had in front of the past participle. If only I'd heard my alarm clock. I wish I had I wish I'd got up in time. Or if you're in America, I wish I had gotten up in time. Oh. I'm sad. Why? Because I wish I possessed money. If only I drove a car. If only I knew what to do today. I wish I had gone to work yesterday. If only I had heard my alarm clock. I wish I had got up in time. So that's one way to express regret. But there are alternative phrases you can use instead. Let's look at how some of these work. Uh, so below we have um, four different phrases, one with two variations. It's a shame. It's a pity. I'm gutted that. This is a bit more informal. There are other informal ones you can use, but uh, this is a popular one. And I regret Depends whether regret's followed by a verb or a noun phrase. Regret can be followed by the ing form if it's a verb or a noun phrase if it is uh, not a verb, if you're following it by a noun. So let's change these phrases again and see how these new phrases can fit into our paragraph. So let's start off with it's a shame. Now, with these new phrases, we go back to the original grammar. We keep them negative and they don't uh, change tense. So it's a shame would look like this if I used it in the first example. Because it's a shame, I don't possess money. It's a shame I don't possess money. It still expresses the fact I'm sad about something. There's a kind of a regret within there, a disappointment. But we stick with the grammar we had in the beginning. We're emphasizing the fact there's a negative situation and the fact is in the present tense. So it's different to I wish and if only. So it's a shame I don't possess money. Let's try the next one. It's a pity. I don't drive a car. So same again. It's a pity. You stick with the present tense because it's a present situation and you keep the negative. It's a pity I don't drive a car. And the next one, let's use I'm gutted that. Um, Remembering it's very informal, so if you if you need to write formally or speak formally, don't use this, but it can be used. I'm gutted that I don't know what to do today. So again, 
<clears throat> uh, present tense, keep the negative in there. Gutted, of course, here is not a verb. It's an adjective. I am gutted. Then we come to using the word regret itself. Now, regret can be used in two ways, depending on what comes afterwards. Uh, first of all, if it's regret followed by a verb, we use the ing form of the verb. So let's change this one here. I regret not going to work yesterday. So if it's in the negative form, we use not after the word regret. I regret not going to work yesterday. But we can also use it as a noun phrase as well. Look how this works. I regret I regret the time <laughs> let's, let's make it even more relevant. I regret the extra time I spent in bed. Do you ever do that? Do you ever spend too much time in bed and then regret the time you spend in bed? Uh, so look what's happened here. We've just used the word I regret, and then we use a noun phrase afterward. No, um, it's not a proper sentence. Um, it's uh, You have to be careful here because there is a verb in there, but it's part of the noun phrase. I spent in bed is simply describing the extra time. You could just simply write, I regret the extra time with no verb. And that would be correct as well. So regret followed by a noun phrase. Um, you simply say, I regret, followed by the noun phrase. So there's a few ways that you can use regret, um, re speak about regrets in your speaking or writing. Let's practice some of these now in a role play. We're going to do this in three stages. First of all, I'm going to go through a role play with you. So I will say all the words, you listen. And then the second time, you are going to respond to the questions. So listen first time so you know how to say it. And then the second time, you copy. So listen to me first. What are you disappointed about? I wish my car worked. Why did that happen? It doesn't have any petrol. If only I had filled it up before my last trip. Is there anything else wrong? Yes, I forgot my sister's birthday. I regret not checking my diary. OK, now your turn. So this time, I will say the words in black. You reply with the words in blue. What are you disappointed about? Why did that happen? Is there anything else wrong? And now for the final time, answer with your own ideas. So I will ask questions. You respond in any way you like, but try and use some of the words to do with regrets from the lesson. What are you disappointed about? Why did that happen? Is there anything else wrong? I hope you found that useful. Don't forget, I have a full advanced English grammar course at a very good price on the Udemy platform. So click on the link in the description below if you want to take your learning further with me with your advanced English grammar.